Good morning, everyone, and welcome once again to the Pete Delatore Business Hour. One of our huge partners is FIU, Florida International University's College of Business, and they're going to be celebrating once again and uh, discussing their Hall of Fame and have a big event that will be happening towards the end of October. Today, to open up the show, we have one of their 2015 recipients, Jose Hucandela, who is the founder of Fairchild Partners and the recipient of the 2015 FIU Hall of Fame Entrepreneurship Award. But without further ado, let me bring on to the program this morning one of the distinguished recipients that will be part of the FIU Hall of Fame festivities this year is Jose Juncadella. How are you, my friend? Good morning, Pete. I'm honored to be in your program, and good morning, uh, South Florida. Uh, thank you so much for having me. Well, Zay, uh, before we uh, we move on and, and get into the awards and some of the exciting things that are happening on your end, let me share with the listeners a little bit about yourself. Entrepreneurship and passion have been key to Jose Jucadea's success. The founder of commercial real estate firm Fairchild Partners will receive the Entrepreneurship Award at FIU College of Business 2015 Hall of Fame. A veteran of the South Florida real estate market, Juncadella launched Fairchild Partners back 10 years ago in 2005. Obviously, times were challenging, as he recalls many times, and hard hit by the, as we know, the great recession that was looming around the corner. Chair Fairchild thrived and was able to overcome all of this and has remained privately owned 10 years later. Fairchild has represented companies such as Facebook, Anheuser-Busch, Feeding South Florida and Baptist Health South Florida, as well as exclusively handling developments like Downtown Doral and Centergate at uh, Gretney. He's been active in several industry organizations, currently serving as the 2016 president of the Commercial Industrial Association of South Florida and past president of Realtors Commercial Alliance, RCA, since 2009. Juncadea is a member of the Society of Industrial and Office Realtors. That is an acronym, C-I-O-R. And he graduated. He graduated from FIU all the way back in 1981 and obviously has been very connected with the university. So first of all, my friend, congratulations for your achievement and your 10-year anniversary. Well, thank you so much, Pete. Uh, it's definitely, uh, I was completely floored and honored. It is uh, very unexpected. I am so grateful, and it's so special to receive it this year when my entrepreneurship is celebrating our 10th anniversary. Now, uh, you're, uh, something like this, an award like this, is, uh, is very, very special, uh, Jose, and, and uh, yes, I, I know that it really hits. What does this mean for you? Uh, uh, and, and, you know, how, how, when you first heard the news that you were going to be honored, uh, how was that like? Well, I was, uh, I, I was shocked, basically. Uh, like I said, it was, uh, you know, I'm very honored by FIU. It's, uh, you know, FIU has been, uh, you know, a great part of my success. And, uh, and, and it's truly an honor. I mean, uh, I, I've been a commercial real estate broker, basically an entrepreneur for over 30 years. And, uh, you know, receiving this award on my 10th anniversary of the founding of my company is very, very special. Tell us a little bit about Fairchild Partners. Well, Fairchild Partners is a team of trained commercial real estate experts in the South Florida real estate market uh, who use advanced technology and ascribe to strict standards of personal integrity in order to provide a tailored, highly personal, personalized approach to solving the commercial real estate needs of our clients. Um, you know, we have um, our speciali- specializations are tenant and landlord representation buyer and seller representation in the office and industrial markets uh, within the South Florida, more geared towards the uh, Miami market. Uh, we were recently named one of the top 25 commercial real estate brokers by the South Florida Business Journal. Well, it's another award, and obviously you're doing some great work. Uh, what I know you've been in the business for a long time. What inspired you to open your own company, especially as, as things are starting to loom uh, as this recession came upon us? Well, I started, uh, like I mentioned, I started 30 years ago, 30 some years ago when I was uh, still at FIU. My, uh, you know, I started, uh, got my license then. Uh, I started in residential real estate while I was still studying. 
And then I fell in love with the business, management and marketing at the university. I started taking courses and um, got into the commercial side of the business. Um, once I graduated, I worked with a company called Doran Jason. They're, Correct. They were a major player in the, what is known today as Doral, what well, was known then as the Airport West Market. Mm-hmm. Um, and I started focusing in office and industrial. Um, then I moved on to... I worked with a Codina group, uh, formerly known as Codina Butch Klein, uh, working with major innovative business parks. I was named, you know, top producing broker there for 16 years. And um, in 2005, I co-founded Fresh Partner with my wife, who is also a, a commercial real estate broker. She's a CCIM certified uh, broker. Uh, and like you mentioned before, we launched it in the midst of the recession. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, and now, 10 years later, we uh, we have uh, grown as a company, and uh, we have major accounts, mostly with institutional uh, institutional companies. And um, it's it's been a great ride so far. When you made the decision to go out, you were very successful uh, with the two organizations you mentioned there. And, and do you remember the day that you said, you know, I, I I'm I'm going to open up my own organization and. You know that's not always an easy step. It's it's you, you just never know. There's no guarantees when that happens, especially if you're having a great career. Uh, do you recall when you made that decision how it felt like uh, inside of you to say, you know, I'm now going to go on my own here? Uh, how did that feel like? Because so many so many uh, entrepreneurs that are listening this morning went through that, and then we have also a lot of professionals that are in that state right now of thinking about making that move you know, as they're enjoying a very successful career. How was it like, and, and what was the trigger for you? Well, it's, it's, uh, as, a, as an entrepreneur, because a commercial real estate broker is an entrepreneur, you yes. know, we're based on commission. That's right. I always, I always wanted to have my company. You know, when, when you um, decide to form your company, it's because you think that you have the right formula. You know, formula, you know, in, in my case, I wanted to run – uh, a different type of company. Um, I had a great experience with the previous companies I worked, great success with them. And I just felt that, uh, you know, in order to continue the passion that I had for the business, I had to do it, uh, you know, with a certain formula, you know, more technology-oriented, uh, more uh, value added to our clients, uh, more services basically provided in order to... to uh, you know, to evolve with the industry. As you know, technology is evolving in our industry. Mm-hmm. I've always loved technology. And um, and I thought, uh, and, 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 I, and at this point, successful, that, that it was a good idea. And um, it, it all starts with a passion uh, that, that you have in your business, for your business and, and, and that passion to make it better uh, every day. Um, so I hope that, that answers your question. Well, you know, it, it is it was a phenomenal uh, – it was very uh, authentic what you just said right now because, uh, you know, it's like you said, when you are a, a, a real estate uh, a professional, well, residential, commercial, whatever that might be, you, you really are in business for yourself. I mean, you're part of an organization, but you are in business for yourself. And if you're going to be successful, it's up to you. But yet, when you take that bold step in and you say, okay, now I am – at the top of this organization, my name is on here. That takes a whole different outlook, and it's a whole different perspective. And and it's it, it it you know what you just said, having your formula, the right formula. It's you know you were successful in the other organizations, and they're two very good organizations for years and years. And it really uh, catapulted your 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 career. But when you said you know I'm going to do it. My way, I, I with the formula that I have in mind here, and, and it's like you said, ten years later, look what happened. So your gut told you a lot, and without any guarantee, you didn't know if that formula was the right one, right? Uh, no, 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 no. It's uh, it's just that uh, that gut feeling that you have that uh, you're going the right way, and um, and uh, that most entrepreneurs feel. You know, you uh, uh, you know you know what what success is, uh, and you follow that path of success. Um, you know, your reputation after many years in the business carries with you, um, you know, never taking uh, shortcuts, and that follows you everywhere you go. So, uh, you know, and, and, and that, that's what, uh, you know, we, we have a different type of company, 
And in terms of what the services that we provide our clients, and, and that's, uh, that's really why we are successful as a company. I'm having the pleasure of speaking with Jose Juncadella, the founder of Fairchild Partners and the recipient of the 2015 FIU Hall of Fame Entrepreneurship Award. We have been talking with Jose about starting his own uh, organization, Fairchild Partners, after a very, very successful career uh, with two of the top uh, organizations in South Florida, and he took a bold step to open up his own company. Jose, uh, if you don't mind sharing with us, what are some of your high and low points in your entrepreneurship journey? Okay, uh, my uh, of course it started 30 years ago. The the, the toughest parts obviously are the, the first few years in the business when you're building up uh, what we call our pipeline in terms of deals. Um, it's, it's it's been like every business you have you have ups and downs. Uh, you know we we as commercial real estate brokers work on tremendous amount uh, of numbers of transactions and our percentage of. Uh, Successful ones, uh, it's uh, you know, like probably twenty or thirty percent. So that means that we work on a lot of a lot of transactions to make uh, some uh, successful. Um, I, I think the toughest part uh, that we've had of the last thirty years has been the the Great Recession you mentioned mm-hmm. uh, in, earlier, where uh, you know selling real estate was like selling ice to the Eskimos. There was no activity. <laughs> Right. And it is uh, it is an uh, economic condition we had never seen before. So you know it's a uh, you know like an entrepreneur you you find the ways to survive. You know you uh, you figure it out. You in every market uh, there's always opportunity. And uh, you know we had at that time uh, you know we have started a company, we have built it up, we had a lot of personnel and um, and it was challenging, but we find our way to survive and. Uh, with uh, with integrity and the honesty that we've always worked with, and um, and that that has been mostly mostly the downs, the ups, of course, have been the, the very successful uh, when you know our clients uh, uh, are grateful for what we do for them. When we are successful in our projects, uh, we have handled a lot of uh, projects for our clients, and thank goodness, all of them have been uh, have had good results. A lot of have a lot of it has to do with uh, you know how we approach our projects, uh, the marketing that uh, we provide to them, and the uh, and 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 just uh, the getting involved in the whole process uh, through they you know every single day uh, make sure that everything is running the way you want it to run. Is that part of of the right formula for Jose and his team? Absolutely, absolutely. It's not a formula. I think our brokers, uh, no, no, I think it, it's the reality. Our brokers are highly trained. They, uh, you know, we immediately uh, involve them in technology and using, uh, you know, all the tools that it, that uh, we can bring from the, uh, you know, cloud-based systems, from uh, uh, marketing, and um, and uh, not as a typical, I don't want to call it a typical broker, but we we are. Are trained to know about uh, about construction, about development, about legal issues, and uh, and we we highly train our personnel and our brokers to to be able to every single client provide a lot of service to them uh, in order for them to make the right decisions. Now, in speaking about the market, the market of you're one of the leaders in South Florida. And we are uh, almost in the new year. <laughs> it's amazing when I think yeah. back. January first was just yesterday, and and ten months later, we're we're starting to take a look back. I mean, we're still capitalize trying to capitalize and leverage opportunities in the fourth quarter of the year. But uh, how, uh, in your professional uh, opinion, and and in being in this business as long as you have now, uh, how has 2015 developed and and what do you think uh, is are the early signs for 2016? Uh, it's a good question. Uh, 2015 has been a very good year for the commercial real estate industry, and um, you know what we do is uh, mostly industrial and office real right. estate. Mm-hmm. From the industrial side, um, you know we we have seen great activity in the market. Uh, we ourselves signed 
the largest e- deal um, coming into this year, which is was the Amazon.com, mm-hmm. uh, you know, 335,000 square foot lease in uh, in the Airport West Market. And this year we handle a major park called Transat Logistics Center that we started from scratch and completely mm-hmm. leased up over 200,000 square feet. So uh, it's been a very positive year. Uh, you know, there's a uh, looming into the future. We have uh, the, the Panama Canal expansion, yes. which we believe is going to bring more trade to South Florida. Uh, our economy continues to grow. Our figures for the airports are in all-time high. Our uh, population uh, also is growing. Our employment uh, employment is in you know in the upper uh, echelons of the country. So very positive during 2015, and not only that, but it looks like 2016 is going to be that way. We see a lot of our companies uh, they have that pan up you know expansion that uh, they hadn't uh, uh, taken. It started to see more growth in in, in all the industry. Uh, there's a lot of new development going on through the industrial sectors, both in Medley, Airport West, Hialeah, and um, and that that uh, it, it, you know the occupancy levels is in the upper 90s. So it couldn't be better for 2016. I you know we expect both in the office and industrial to continue for at least one more year. Can't say what's going to happen in 2017, but at least for 2016, it's uh, it's looking that it's going to be very, very good. Is there anything out there that we should be aware of to make sure that we we can continue to have uh, this growth and 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 you know and, and the economy flowing the way it is? Is there anything out there that we've got to keep an eye on so that we don't get caught by surprise? I think that the, the major challenge that we're all facing is infrastructure. I think uh, you know. Uh, at least, uh, you know, the, the city and the state is helping us with, you know, Port Miami and some of the infrastructure there. But uh, we see a lot of, uh, you know, challenges with traffic. Uh, you know, in the mm-hmm. Airport West, uh, you know, we're, you know, basically opportunity has been for for parks to be created, be more urbanized just because of the traffic. Um, and, and that's, I think, the, the biggest challenge that we have. Um, another challenge that we have is the lack of land. I mean, there's a, there's been such a demand for land in Miami and uh, in South Florida, realizing there's only 60 miles between the Atlantic Ocean and the Everglades, right. that uh, the amount of land uh, and the cost of land has become very, very expensive. So that is something that we got to keep an eye on well, in what's order ha- to continue our growth. Well, the, the growth that we're seeing literally is vertical uh, because of what you just said. We uh, we're kind of running out of land, and we uh, now are starting to see a lot of projects go up. I think a lot of the zonings have been loosened up a little bit to allow more uh, high-rise construction. So I think in probably five to ten years, we're going to see a metropolitan area that has uh, where, you know, before a, I'm going to say a 15-story building, 20-story building, you know, outside of, of Brickell, Gables, downtown, was uh, was a rarity. I think that's going to become more of a common look because of what you just said right now. We're going to see a lot more vertical 15, 20-story buildings in, 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 in the suburban areas as well. Oh, absolutely. If you go to the Rile now, you'll see some high-rise uh, yep. uh, you know, residential. Uh, and you know what, Dee? We're starting to hear and listen to, uh, to some architects talking about two-story and three-story warehouses. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. So, to your point, uh, I think that's going to occur in the, you know, in, in the next 20, 30 years where we're going to see new technology and construction applied to even industrial buildings where you're going to see two and three-story buildings just because of a lack of land. Well, your knowledge of the industry, your leadership in the industry, and your success as an entrepreneur, uh, I, I've gotten to know you a little bit better, so of all of our listeners, all of our friends this morning, and I can see why you are going to be provided with the Entrepreneurship Award for the 2016 FIU Hall of Fame uh, festivities. And uh, you've got great company uh, that are part of that team that are going to be honored this year. We have some more of your colleagues, the award recipients of this year, that we're going to be bringing on to the program. We've already spoken with Manny Medina a couple of weeks ago. And it's an elite group. And I can see why you're being honored. And my congratulations to you. It's got to be just something wonderful for the family as well, correct? Oh, absolutely. We're all 
very excited. We're going to bring uh, all our family to the event and uh, and uh, all our companies. So we're uh, uh, again, we're we're super honored to be uh, to be the recipient. Uh, it, it is great for for us. It's a it's a it's probably the best reward that I can receive from uh, the use in the business. Before we wrap it up, uh, Jose, uh, what one message would you like to share with the entrepreneurs that are listening this morning, regardless of whatever industry they're in? What's that one thing that you want to leave them with today? I, I always say that never cut corners, even the small things. Hone excellence in everything you do. I try to be excellent in everything I do. It's that habit of excellence is what you got to be. Habit is something that you form. And and that means that everything you think, say, or do have to have that element of excellence. And uh, that's what I would leave, uh, and that's what I preach to to uh, to to my kids, to my employees. And uh, if you get used to that habit, uh, you're going to be successful no matter what. Do it right, and always continue to do it right, because uh, even though you may be tempted to take those shortcuts from time to time. Stick with your plan. Stick with doing things the right way because, you know, all of us want to have sustainability, long-term sustainability in our business. And one of the key elements of that is doing things the right way from the beginning and ongoing because it's, it's also at the end of the day, Jose, the legacy that you leave for your family and the marketplace as a whole. Absolutely, Pete. I want to leave a legacy of a way of running a company. I want to be remembered as a broker who always had integrity and honesty with clients, which is the same same thing I want for my company to have. Absolutely. My friend, congratulations once again on, on behalf of all of our listeners and, and, and everyone in the industry because, again, uh, it's a competitive industry, as, as you know, but yet – uh, you need to also do what's right for the industry, for the benefit of everyone in the industry, because there's so many that are there now and so many more that are going to be coming. And you want to make sure that you know commercial real estate and every part of it is it's something that everyone uh, or a lot of folks aspire to to become involved with, because the more we get quality people in the industry, the better it's going to help our economy in the long run. So I cannot thank you enough and, of course, congratulate you for being honored this year by FIU. Well, thank you so much, Pete. I enjoy being in your program. And, uh, again, good morning, South Florida. I hope uh, I hope uh, there's more entrepreneurs out there that uh, just want to get going. And, uh, and, again, thank you so much. Have a great day, my friend. Take care. Same to you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.